It's the odd, odd, odd to Newfoundland. Ghostly greetings from your host, Jonathan. 31 days of Halloween. <laughs> Under a spell to know that witches have had a bad run, well, all throughout history, really. And between 1400 and 1700 alone, an estimated, well, close on 100,000 souls of supposed witches were executed for allegedly doing the devil's work. I'd like to talk to you guys about some famous witches from the world, well, just from the past. Uh, one in particular caught my eye, actually, which was Mother Shipton. There's so many myths built around a person. What does it say about that person? For Ursula Sothile, better known as Mother Shipton, perhaps the added mystery, however fictitious, is a testament to her enduring reputation. Mother Shipton was feared and highly regarded. This English prophetess of the 16th century was well known. Born to a mother who was also suspected to be a witch, Mother Shipton was described as hideously ugly and disfigured. So much so... And the locals called her Old Hag Face and believed her father to be the devil himself. Despite her unfortunate appearance, she was said to have been England's greatest clairvoyant and was often compared to her male contemporary, one of my personal heroes, Nostradamus. According to the legend, she had predicted the Spanish Armada, the Great Plague of London, the Great Fire of London, and also the execution of Mary, Queen of Scots. And some even speculate the internet Thankfully for her sake, though, Mother Shipton did not die by the sword like so many accused witches before her and after. Instead, she died a normal death and is said to have been buried on unholy ground on the outer edges of New York somewhere around 1560. Another well-known Wicca was Agnes Sampson. It was the perfect storm to kill witches, and that included Agnes Sampson, a Scottish midwife and healer. In early 1590, King James VI of Scotland married Anne of Denmark, Norway, who, along with her court, had been fearful and bewildered by the subject of dark magic in general. The queen's fears got the better of her new king, and after the two experienced dangerously treacherous storms en route to sailing back to Scotland, James VI launched a campaign against witches. Why? Because life's a witch. <laughs> also, because he came to the conclusion that witches had to cast a spell on Mother Nature and started that horrendous storm. Of the 70 people accused of being witches in North Berwick area between 1590 and 92, Agnes Sampson was one of them, thanks to another accused witch, Galus Duncan. The confessions were brought on by torture, and the questioning oftentimes came from the king himself, but legend has it that Agnes doggedly denied the charges against her, among them that she had attended a witch's coven on Halloween night to help create the infamous storm that plagued the king and queen's voyage. Unfortunately, though, however, the torture was too much for her to take, and it broke her spirit, sleep-deprived and exhausted by being around in a witch's bridle, an instrument that inserted four prongs in the mouth and was attached to a wall, she confessed to being allies with Satan and conspiring to kill the king. She was strangled and burned to death right then and there. Oh boy, and it, and it doesn't get much better here because one of the most gruesome ways to die is about to be talking soon. Her name was Malin, Malin Matt's daughter. What goes around comes around. Malin Matt's daughter was a Swedish widow of Finnish descent who was accused of her own daughters of being a witch. But in this case, there was no sorcery involved. Instead, it was the daughter's charge against her was that she abducted their children and took them to a satanic Sabbath. Malin, along with Anna Simmons' daughter, Hack, were the last victims executed for being witches during the Great Swedish Witch Hunt of 1668-76, often referred to as the Great Noise. What makes Malin Master unique is that she's considered the only witch in Swedish history to have been, well, burned alive. Normally, witches were decapitated or hanged to death before their bodies were burned at the stake, which was Anne Setman's daughter's hack's fate. But it appears Malin's refusal to admit her guilt made the authorities less gracious in her sentencing, unlike her fellow deathmate Anna, who humbly asked for forgiveness. Although never really admitting to being a witch, Malin firmly maintained her innocence and her goings-on made history. In the end, she refused to shake hands with her daughters, and as one of them called out to her to repent, 
Well, Malin gave her daughter into the hands of the devil and cursed her for eternity. As the flames covered her body, she reportedly did not scream, nor did she appear to be in pain. For the locals, it was further proof that she was indeed a witch. Nonetheless, shortly after her death, one of her daughters was convicted of perjury, and she too was forced to walk through death's door. So there you have it. Not everything happened in Salem's lot, so to speak. And to be honest with you, the, the, the modernized idea of someone being burned alive at the stake actually came from that story. So what do you guys think of that? Well, first and foremost, I happen to have a lot of friends who are, well, I guess you could say they're Wiccan. Really, like like, like they, they practice some things that you might consider witchcraft, but really it's more about, well goddesses and 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 nature and being at one with that kind of stuff but i don't really think there's a whole lot of dark evil and stuff going on there whatsoever anyhow guys i hope you guys are enjoying this year's 31 days of halloween i'll see you guys tomorrow